take out the vital organs and you burn all that stuff. And that takes care of the problem. You are now listening to From the Pit. It's killing a lot of people. And welcome to another episode of From the Pit, the show where we bring you bands and shit to more bands and shit. Fuck it, I'm tired. <laughs> I feel that. My name is Phil, with me is Frank, Yo. Mike, Yo. and Sam. You know, you could have just gone with, we bring you bands and more shit. That would have worked. No, 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 no. Listen. Needed the double shit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're here to talk to you about all the metal and hardcore and all that fun shit that we found on the internet. Uh, at the pit.com, patreon.com, slash from the pit. Mike, as always. <laughs> Tom, just roll it. Yeah, mm. like I was, I was already happy at the beginning. <laughs> and then there was that transition at the end. I was like, "Oh yeah!" Oh, I was chunky and I actually, oh. I the <clears throat> the music was like overpowering you guys for a second, so I got to hear a little more of that solo. And I like I like emotional solos. I like those solos that kind of just like take their time and let everything breathe a little bit. I mean, I like my fast scale runs as much as the next guy, but you know. I don't know. That was that that solo. I think was actually my favorite part of this track so far. It can but, it can grab yeah, you like, a little bit more when they're when they're really putting something behind the notes as opposed to just endlessly yeah, shredding. Like, yeah. What what is that? What it's like? I, I mean, I hate to be the guy to quote him because I feel like everyone fucking does. But it's like, do you remember in that spe- that one special George Carlin did where he's talking about like you know white guys who play the blues, and he's like. It's not enough to know he's not it's like it's not enough to play the notes. You have to know why they're being played. Yeah. And you know when when people do that, when people do put some thought behind that, it's always kind of a nice change of pace. But anyway, yeah, I feel like this band would have been pretty like maybe not huge, but I feel like they would have done really well in the mid 90s. I feel like they would have gotten onto some pretty solid tour packages. Yeah, I mean, maybe they'll grab an audience now that the the like fucking you know, getting big again, death metal, old school death mm-hmm. metal in general. I mean, 
I don't know. Yeah. I really enjoyed the vocals. You know, they were dark and gross, but legible. Um, yeah, the riffs <clears> were fun. So this was Bear Mace off of Charred Fields of uh, Slaughter. <laughs> I like how this band has one giant that makes the other giant look small. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> These fucking guys are huge. There's monsters. <laughs> Like, oh, horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Just like not only is he the not only is he the drummer, he's the bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they carry around the bear mace. But uh you can get on over to bearmace.bandcamp.com to check this out. It was released August Dude, of this year. Have you have you fucking like seen videos of like what bear mace does to people? That shit is fucking terrifying. Yeah, it's corrosive. It's a little corrosive. You don't isn't fuck, it? <clears throat> dude. You don't fuck with bear mace. That shit's <laughs> well, awful. It's frightening. I, I assume if it's, I'm assuming it's meant for fucking bears, which are you know monsters yeah, and of they, creatures. And still, sometimes they shrug that shit off. So, dude, I shit you not. Like, <laughs> my my uncle built a bunch of furniture for a hunting guide that he knows. And the guy has a full a full sized uh, taxidermied grizzly bear that was like twelve hundred pounds when it was alive, and it is one of the biggest and scariest things you'll ever see in your fucking life. <laughs> yeah, those are terrifying creatures. Yeah, no, gri- grizzly bears are fucking frightening. They they really fucking are. Sorry, I'm in, I'm in a weird place today. Like I'm I'm exhausted, like Phil, but I'm also like in that manic state. Yes. <clears throat> Where I, yeah, just to, oh, it's gonna be a weird episode. Yeah, I want to do nine billion things tonight, but I know I need yeah. to go home and put my ass to bed. <laughs> <clears throat> I know, I know. Please, 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 do not overexert yourself, Phil. We need you. We need tell you me what to healthy. do, bitch. Yeah, do all the Fuck things. You. <laughs> Fuck you, homo. Go to bed. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, we just throwing around homophobia now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Obviously. Yeah. So fuck you. Cancel, Phil. Can- cancel. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. okay. it's a weird offshoot, Bear Mace. I, I quite enjoy your style of death metal. <laughs> well, next up, everyone's going to call next? this. Everyone's going to call this a straight up mark for me. So we're going to listen to a bit of Concede off of Indoctrinate. Tom, cool. Fucking that you don't really usually hear that sort of like wall of sound in hardcore. No, and and like the whole like multi vocalist thing yeah. kind of died and I love it. I'm glad it isn't fully dead. I, I know, mean, yeah. Me too. <laughs> it what I thought was kinda interesting, <clears throat> this has this has like a distinctly modern flair to it. Yeah. But kind of buried beneath that there's this sort of there's this bedrock of more like traditional grind that I find that I mean is is very much heartwarming and appealing to people like myself who kind of lean towards more like the the more traditional like you know death metal oriented grind that kind of stuff you know like I've, I've talked about it before like blood and napalm death and terrorizer stuff like that but <clears throat> yeah I, I like the little I like the little nods to the to the kind of older style just to to placate maybe to placate people like me who knows. Oof, plus, just lather all that gravelly 5150 tone all over my body. <laughs> Naked, glistening body. You can get on over to... What? 
<laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you can get on over to concedehc.bandcamp.com to check that out. That was the track Indoctrinate, and this was released June of this year. They are from Australia. All right, that's going <clears> to <throat> bring it on over to me. Yeah, buddy. Time roll that. <laughs> something very particular about uh the the melodic sensibility of oi yep and while yep. i'm not like a a diehard fan i mean i like a lot of the old oi stuff um you know i'm just not super well versed in it uh a lot of my favorite hardcore bands are my favorite hardcore bands because of that fucking influence i mean you look at fucking Sheer Terror, uh, fucking Agnostic Front, uh, even more modern, Wisdom and Chains. Yep, yep. Like, uh, it brings something so unique to the sound, and it brings such a fucking energy that it's it's. It, it, I, I love it. I love that. You are you are hitting on some of the points. <laughs> I was gonna say is uh, something that I've realized um, is that I really need to go deep down the the oi like rabbit hole because. God, I love this. Like, this is exactly what I want. Um, there's times where that, like, melodic drive is... It's the same type of drive that you get from, like, good power metal and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, God, is it, it... This is just meaner. Yes! <laughs> it, it's coming from a goddamn, like, working man's perspective. And yeah. that's what I'm look, about. Look. Like, Sorry, look. go ahead. Oh, no, no. you Go ahead. What I was going to say was, like, uh, I saw the cover... And it's just like, maybe this is because I've known Frank as long as I have. And maybe because I know his tastes as well as I do. But all I could think was when I could look at this was like, this is either going to be like fucking D beat or it's going to be straight up like cheesy fucking like Euro power metal. <laughs> <laughs> like I just, I looked at the cover of like even odds 50, 50. And I mean, I, I kind of got it. I mean, I, I'll be honest. Like I don't really know shit about oi like i think i could name maybe like two oi bands off the top of my head i don't i don't i've never dug into it but i don't know i'm like i'm kind of thinking of like maybe like frank i should start looking into the solo more because that was fun so i think what it, is it happened, sounded like uh, a lot of fun oh so this is uh that was the track last ones to survive off the album the fight goes on by <clears throat> this varies and the pro i will admit i'm gonna have to spend a lot of time uh going down this hole because I feel like every time that I've looked at like the OI tag in Bandcamp, there's a lot of like I'm like I'm like no no it, it gets dangerous no. yeah and that, uh, there's the the other it, the other aspect is like you're like Ugh. it gets dangerous <laughs> listen if they fucking list screwdriver and their influences you probably don't want to like, fucking no. listen to that shit yeah <laughs> hard pass 
It's like, no, bro, I liked them before they were racist. It's, <laughs> they, <laughs> that's not how it works. Isn't it, isn't it? That's just like what every single person I've ever met who yeah. legit likes screwdriver fucking stuff. But this doesn't fall into that category. This is, I, yeah. this one of the ones like, always go to the Facebook page, look through everything. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Like if you, just like if you start like, seeing Celtic crosses and shit, and you you just like no, I mean that's fair though. I got to do the same shit when I'm looking through like modern power violence and stuff too. It's just the other end of the bent, you know. Yeah, dude, how the fuck do you think I feel whenever I'm trawling for black metal on Bandcamp? Yeah, God, it's damn. like it's like because once in a while you just you run across bands with names like fucking Sturmfuhrer Aryan Kampf eighty eight, <laughs> and you're just like oh, like oh yeah, it's like like. <laughs> Like, please buy our new album. It's called Jubliterator. It's like, oh, my oh God. God. <laughs> the fuck? Like, you're fucking. You're, you're, you are. You are five foot. You are five foot six. You weigh a hundred and twenty pounds, soaking wet. You live in Wisconsin, and you don't go outside. God, oh. I can't. I can't, I can't write that down as a title. <laughs> God damn it! No, you never go to not. Oh, who the fuck? Remind no. me. Remind, remind me. This fucking re title. Remind me to say something about Wisconsin when we're done with the show. God. Um, I'm just look. I'm just saying. Like, if, if, if I am so sorry if I upset anyone with that, but it's just like nah. if you trawl through the band camp, just it's trawl through black metal on band camp long enough, you'll run across. Oh, uh, listen, those people are fucking god. losers. I'll say it on the fucking air. They Come are. find me, bitch. You ain't gonna do shit. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah. I will leave. I will leave the comfort of my bedroom and <laughs> fucking walk a shine, hunt you down. I'm just like, <laughs> you fucking idiots. <laughs> so anyway, let's get back to this is, fucking it, it, dope it is, ass bringing. Yeah. Sorry, just any any excuse to shit talk the fucking garbage ass <laughs> NSP fans. I end up having to fucking. Ugh, they get mixed um, in with like, yeah. I'm just trying to find spooky riffs and blast beats, man. That's all I want. So this album is uh from July of this year. Um, Ooh. and yeah, dudes, uh, dudes know how to write songs. They know how to, like, what I've noticed is that the problem with listening to an Oi album is that you're like, fuck, that's catchy. <clears throat> and the next song is like, fuck, that's catchy. To the point that then throughout the day, you'll be like, how do I have five songs stuck in my head? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, to get a hold of this, go to, uh, visveries, oi.bandcamp.com. Yeah, buddy. Casual single for me, baby. Alright. My turn. Tom. <laughs> Makes me just want to run through the wall. <laughs> like, man, is there, is, there stud, is there a stud there? I'm gonna find out. <laughs> You're Dude. the stud finder. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking. I'm looking at their bio. Just the all the bands they list as their influences. It's just. I I don't know if I've ever really been able to say this before, but I can quite literally hear in that track alone, that one minute track. I'm like, yeah, I hear that. I hear all of these bands they've listed. <clears throat> Every single one. Yeah, and I love all of them, too. <laughs> God, I was just listening to Negative Approach yesterday. They're so good. So uh, that was the track. The track. Wow. That was the track, A Feast of Rats, off of the self-titled album by Persistent Aggressor. You are tired. Out of Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was cool. Just like, was it grind? Was it hardcore? Was it metal? Who cares? 
Just get in the pit. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I like the energy with which you uh, presented that. Dude, like I said, I'm, I'm fucking exhausted right now. I'm running on like five hours of sleep, but I'm just like, I'm in that manic state right now where I can't stop myself. Yeah, buddy. I fucking sometimes love that feeling. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just not sustainable. No. Anyway, you can head <laughs> no. over to persistentaggressor.bandcamp.com to check out the rest of that. I highly recommend it. And uh, I got I got some more. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I ain't stopping this week. Tom. is that is just <clears throat> short and to the point and yeah. that point will fucking rip out your throat <laughs> <laughs> loud crunchy aggressive <sighs> perfect as soon as it the guitar started i heard yeah, that you tone. heard the drum beat and you're like oh no i'm kind of in it i think we're in <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Who was that? <laughs> that was the band Pig City out of Phoenix, Arizona, with their track Penance off of the, I guess you'd call it an EP, uh, Terminal Decline. Nice. Yeah. I like it. You can head over to pigcity.bandcamp.com to check out the rest of that. Oh, very nice. Mm-hmm. All right, and one more, Tom. No, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Like, all these bring-ins are just making me miss shows. Like, that feeling of being, like, way too many people packed into a room, mm-hmm. and it's so hot, and everyone's sweating. And uh, it's perfect. Yes. I know. I know. Uh, I think it's pretty clear where my head was at this week when I was looking for mm-hmm. bring-ins. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was the track Curse. Off of No One Wins by Game coming out of the UK. It, it's just ferocious. It, yeah. <sighs> God damn it. Uh, it's right up my alley. I mean, mm. I love it. I just want it loud and aggressive and fast. That's what I brought. You can head over to qualitycontrolhq.bandcamp.com. God, loud and aggressive. I think you fucking got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
that'll uh, that'll do it for me. I just got a casual single this week. I just got one for you. I've actually been looking forward to bringing this band in ever since I found them last week. Because, well, <clears throat> the first thing they had going for them is that they feature, I believe, a couple members of Mournful Congregation. And as everyone who's listened to the show for a long time knows, I am a big Mournful Congregation stan. Like, if you want, like, depressive doom metal, that's the way to go. And so when my boy CJ hit me up and he's like, dude, I just found this fucking band. you got to check them out because there are like doom elements to this, but it's also like not a doom centric band at all. Like, okay. So what exactly do the dudes from mournful congregation have to offer with this band? turns out it's a lot and it's really hard to describe them with words. So Tom, why don't you just play this and let's check it out. That last half threw me for a fucking loop there. I was I was I was wavering for a little bit on on where I was falling exactly, but those riffs fucking that sold me. Yeah. It uh Well I mean it's go ahead. I was gonna say, uh the first half of that song, the the like uh hypnotic rhythm of the, the vocal delivery and way the like the rhythms are falling, even though it's a completely different style, it's reminding me of the way like a uh, satiricon sometimes uh, does their songs and but then that second half hit and i was like oh okay we're we're going completely different here <laughs> no i mean there's 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 a type of band that i've always liked and that's that that's bands that don't stay still so i'm just going to advise everyone who goes and listens to cauldron black ram's stalag uh stalagmire album um you're going to have a lot of things thrown at you in the span of the album, uh, you're not going to be able to process them all the first time around. I assure you, you won't. Uh, it will benefit from repeat listenings. And it's one of those albums that I feel like you might, you might feel like it's unfocused the first time you listen to it, but no, they're just, they don't like staying still. They don't like staying in one place for very long. And I actually respect that that mentality is a bad it's it's hard to write songs that never really repeat or stay still and man i don't it's just it's so hard to believe in in some ways that this is the same these are some of the same guys who play fucking in mourn, mournful congregation so this band is out of adelaide australia again they're called cauldron black ram which is like what a fucking name i mean you'll remember it and this is off their album from 2014 called Stalagmire. The track is called Fork Through Pitch. And I don't, I don't know, man. Like, it's it's impossible to pin down exactly what these, this band does. I mean, like, you got, like, kind of the, the Celtic Frost feel. You got, like, a little little bit of the hard rock groove in the beginning. Then you got, like, kind of the, the black metal influences. And, you know, you got a little bit of that little bit of that death metal, a little bit of punk rock thrown in. It's just, it's... It's that bit. It's a big, gross, like fucking cauldron full of disgusting influence, and I fucking love it. I've listened to this album like three times since I bought it. Fucking hey, 
Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely one I, uh, I I have to spend more time with to really get a feel for it. But there was enough yeah. there that, that definitely uh, caught my attention. <clears throat> it's um, it's not going to hold your hand. This is not an album that will like hold your hand and like be gentle and like warn you of anything. It's just it's going full bore, and whether you come along with it like or not, that's it's like the album's like eh, it's not my problem. We're just gonna keep going. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, head over to uh, I really asking everyone like please please go check this whole album out. It's really interesting. Head over to cauldronblackram.bandcamp.com and check out Stalagmire. Uh, I haven't I haven't checked out the rest of their stuff yet. It's it's on my to do list, but man, it's just I don't know. There was something so bizarre and out of left field about this band, and I I like bands who do that, who stay true to like the metal ethos, but they're always like putting their own little weird, goofy spins on things. So that's enough of my rambling. Again, I'm kind of in that manic mode right now. So that's that's all I got. My casual single. All good, buddy. That'll bring us to a segment. Some might say the most important segment. Some might say the only segment that matters. Oh, we're talking about the Brutal Bruise, baby. Oh, I see you. I see you jumping in there. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, uh, you know what, Tom? Just fucking roll this. I wouldn't give for this lead singer to come here and lightly bully Tom. <laughs> I don't think he's capable of lightly doing anything. Yeah. Have you seen that man? It's just, just like, a mountain of rage. Rush up fucking, against him with his pecs. Fucking <laughs> biceps the size of my leg. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, well. So who is it? It's motherfucking Rot Now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Off their 2011, re- 2011 release, Street Prowl. His eyes peeled. Oh. This is just, god damn, this album has fucking bite to it. It is, it, it fucking just comes out swinging. It it maintains that, there's something about, I'll give it like, West Coast Hardcore has this fucking vibe to it. That like, yeah, it somehow makes <laughs> you think of like, say, it somehow makes you think of like, being in warm weather while at the same time giving you the anger of being in fucking winter. Yeah, bro. I mean, fucking rotting out, easy money. Like, it's. Oh. Uh, actually, I think easy money's from, like, fucking Texas. But, uh, <laughs> either way, it's all that fucking. It's warm all. Weather. Or, like, Arizona. I don't know. They're from some fucking. But, but, uh, yeah, man. It's that vibe, and it's all got that, like. It's all got that hint of suicidal tendencies yeah. to it. Like that's that's always just there in the background. Like that, 
the fucking influence of that band is ridiculous out there. Um, and man, fucking Rotting Out was like one of the bands that fucking shook me awake when I had been kind of away from hardcore forever. Mm-hmm. I fucking stumbled across these guys in 2014, and I was like, holy shit, where have I been? Like, what was I doing? What, Like, I've been asleep for, like, fucking four years. <laughs> they were at they were at last year's This Is Hardcore, correct? Yep. Um, or no, did we go no see they were separately? supposed to be, but I think one of the fucking members, like, broke their leg at a show. We saw them that year. No, I think, we, I think I remember us talking about it, and we... I, yeah, because I was real was fucking bummed. hyped to see him, and they they yeah. ended I, up I not being able to get them, there. We saw them. Uh, we saw them at, uh, at uh, fuck TLA. Okay, because I know I saw them last year, and I remember seeing them Who live. Else was there? Was that just you and me, or was that were you there? I wasn't no, there. Are you sure? Yeah, because I I remember being pissed that I missed that. I it was a uh, some ridiculous fucking lineup. Yeah, I was gonna say because I remember seeing them live last year, and oh, like, it was packed. I didn't like, like almost didn't have a good time just because of how fucking packed it was but and i remember like it was one of those moments where i obviously you before that have gone on about them and like i understood in that moment like who else was there i don't fucking remember i know it was some ridiculous like the lineup was like a fucking dream lineup was four years strong the band that we were like meh no oh if it was that show it was the uh it was knock loose uh fuck it might have been knock loose rotting out uh, um and then it Not was a day to remember. Stick to your guns. Was it stick to your guns? Where their breakdowns are pretty tight, but like generally, I just mm. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, it was a good show. Yeah, it was hot and sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, back to uh, fucking rotting out. Like, who that the fucking guitar tone and the fucking bass tone combined. I think that's one of the things that also gets me on this album. Is oh yeah, dude, They're, like heavy on the bass tones the fucking that fucking just nasty troubly bass Mm -hmm. uh and then i think that lends a little bit to the hot sound to the the warm weather sound oh i love it yeah they're full support the (laughs) the only pickup you need on a bass is the fucking bridge pickup (laughs) god damn so i hear that string fucking wobble sound Mm. i love it (laughs) now Obviously, this album's great, but this segment, we need a beer to go along with this. We do. Mm -hmm. We need something with some bite. Nailed it. We need something with that fucking aggression to it. Mm -hmm. But we also, I feel like you want something that you can also just pound away in the heat. It's dangerous, but you're gonna. (laughs) Yeah, you you shouldn't. (laughs) Don't tell me how to live my life. (laughs) Uh, So for that, we've got Bonesaw's Squeezins, their double India pale ale. Fucking juicy and hoppy. So this is a... You're getting flavors of, like, orange, tangerine, and it's also a... Sporting a 9%. Woo! Yeah. Also, what, something I'm very glad about, it doesn't hide that 9%. No. Like, you take a sip, you get all those, like, juicy flavors, and then all of a sudden you get smacked with that fucking alcohol. Yeah, this is... This is, like, fucking Walter punching you in the face. You're not gonna fucking... Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm gonna forget about it. Ah, <laughs> uh, goddamn. Yeah, this is uh, goddamn. This is nice. Which I had no warning, no warning, that nope. I would show up today and be drinking a fucking sixteen ounce nine percenter. Yeah, you Guess sh- I'm trying to like fucking get healthy and stop drinking during the week. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. That's not happened on the show. When is your cheat day? Yeah, it has to be. But uh, it's a do yourself a favor, throw on rotting out street brow, pick up a four pack of bone saws squeezins, have yourself a good time. Do it. Mm. God, that one made me happy. Mm. Mm-hmm. It was a good pairing. I haven't listened to enough rotting out recently. It's I've one- never listened to rotting out. Ah, uh, do it. Start with their new album. It's real good. It's so All right. good. It's so aggressive. <sighs> So fucking angry and with that fucking with that suicidal tendencies touch. It's catchy just, too. Like yeah, yeah. What, what stuck out to me most in reviewing that track was it's like, you know, this is just a collection of crudely put together riffs that are somehow super catchy in that he wraps the lyrics around 
It's just it's just good yeah, punk hardcore. Yeah, it's it's such a fucking phenomenal uh, vocal approach to hardcore. Also, because of just the goddamn catchiness, it makes you want to. It makes you almost want to dance around in style while destroying your house. Uh-huh. That's what fucking. I mean, that's what made. Uh, I've, I've talked about it a million times, but "Calling Hours" by Bane, mm-hmm. off of "Don't Wait Up." What made that track as big as it was was all of the fucking guest vocalists and um, you know his appearance specifically, which was more aggressive than anything else happening <laughs> in that song, placed right in the middle of it, is so fucking heavy. It's ridiculous. I do remember when seeing Rotting Out Live for the first time, just being like, oh god, he is so angry. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Just a a giant, unstoppable mess. Don't get in front of it. It's like just stepping in front of a fucking speeding train. So, it's gonna bother me not remembering that fucking set list. It was was knocked loose and stick to your guns. Okay. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find anything else that was on that show because I don't care enough to dig, but (laughs) that was the fucking November 1st, 2019. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so... Wawa's new... What the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Now, anyone listening not from the area is going to be like, what the fuck's a Wawa? (laughs) (laughs) Fucking... What, did you wait? Did you wait to load the clips, Thomas? Did you not oh, know there was going to be an ad? He's ignoring us now. <laughs> Goddamn son of a bitch. Uh, son of a bitch. So. This is this is the funniest technical issue we've ever had. The uh, Wawa drop? Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, as, as gut-wrenching as it was, the, the drops during our, during our interview last week were kind of funny. Uh-huh. They weren't great. I wasn't happy about them, but no. in in hindsight, they were always at the still, most inopportune moments. I, I mean, if we're talking about it, I still like when Tom was checking out his comic book collection while we were trying to record. <laughs> <laughs> Plastic sheaths on these. Uh, yeah, things. yeah. <laughs> it's like Thomas. Put down, Bro, it put used down to be Taco Bell put, wrappers and shit. Thomas, Thank God put down the show the, sucked back then. Yeah. Put down the Iron Man comic and get back to the show. All right. <laughs> We, well, <laughs> we got to talk about some stuff. Yes. Uh, so yeah, a couple things. Uh, any uh, listener show has probably heard me mention reserving dirt naps a few times. Mm-hmm. I am a uh, more than and, once. Yeah, and uh, well, they got a, a four tracker dropping uh, right at the end of this week on August twenty first, and uh, up on YouTube, there's a a thirty second clip of what we're going to hear. Tom, play that. Right. Oh, yeah. man. It's so angry. Oh, man. I man. forgot you said teaser. I'm like sitting here waiting like, drop. <laughs> God damn it. Listen, with a fucking name like reserving dirt naps, the, the, it doesn't matter what you do. You got one of the heaviest names of all fucking time. And they fucking follow through with it. Yeah. God damn. It's so fucking angry. Did you clean your glasses since the last time I called you out for this? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> But I work at a dirty store. <laughs> I'm looking through these things. It's, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm probably going to get... My windshields are clean. Anyway. Yeah, I'm probably going to get pink eye again. <laughs> <laughs> that was a thing? Well, get, not... It wasn't for my glasses, but, uh, you know... Okay. Yeah. I did have pink eye at one point. <laughs> right. God damn it. But Reserving Dirt Nats releasing a, another disaster coming out on August 21st. Very nice. I want it. Yeah. I think I was saying before the show. That's literally releasing the day before I go on vacation. It sounds, like, it sounds like somebody got new amplifiers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking listen to that, and then I'm just gonna literally beat the shit out of Mother Nature. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ! Fucking <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> jumping off a trail, beating the shit out of a deer. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just oh, want yeah, to I'm see the end. I just want to see the end result where he gets fucking gored. 
No, no, no. I'm going to Here's Antler. I'm going to leap off of Bond Cliff going, I'm going to punch you in the fucking dick, Mother Nature. <laughs> All right. <sighs> we got any more um, not clip related things before I play this bit? I don't think so. Nah, there's some things that should be clips, but um, my ass has been way too busy, so let's let's <laughs> roll with this. Okay. Uh, Unleash the Archers has uh, made a second track available for preview before the release of their new album, and we're going to preview it. I love where they're going with on this. Oh, man, oh, my geez. girlfriend's gonna get so annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> you heard those like divergent harmonies she was doing, like, uh, it's so, it's it's so good, so good. Like, they're also they're starting to pull in like some of those elements from like some of the more like <laughs> European like uh, symphonic like power metal bands. Elephants. Into it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. What? Sorry. Mints for elephants. Elephants. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <clears throat> I mean, they're just, they're adding some more. Uh, overall, they're growing. Yep. Everything sounds better. It's, uh, I mean, it's wild for a band like them. They already had such a fucking big sound. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that they're they're pushing it to that next level, which I wouldn't have seen how they were going to do it uh, previously. Um, I'm real excited about this. I mean, like, yeah, exactly. Like, the little things that I thought could get shored up two years ago, two releases ago, have gotten, like, doubly shored up. Like, you know, all the all the licks are, are stronger than they ever have been. Her her vocals haven't taken any changes or no, anything like ridiculous. that. They're ridiculous. They're great. So <laughs> um, I'm real excited for that one. Um, let me see if I got a link up to uh, Unleash the Archer. Unleash the Archers.bandcamp.com. You can go preview it and pre-order mm-hmm. do it alright and uh, that'll do it for us here on From the Pit uh, let me remind everyone that you can head over to fthepit.com for all of your From the Pit needs links all that fun shit patreon.com slash from the pit I know we haven't done it yet but I promise we are actually going to change our Patreon tiers <laughs> uh, so if you fucking yeah, if you do sign up for that five bucks and you don't get your fucking Discord link, hit us up, bug us about it. We will get that shit to you. Uh, Because why the fuck not? Um, We do care. Yeah, we do. We do. Uh, If you're listening on iTunes, leave us fucking... Leave us five stars. Fuck, don't even just leave us a a rating. Leave five stars. Why the fuck not? I don't give a shit. 
<laughs> you don't give a shit either. What's it gonna make? <laughs> what fucking either. difference is it gonna make to you? Thirty seconds later, <laughs> leave five stars, asshole. Bunch of, <laughs> <laughs> bunch of fucking pricks, man. That's <laughs> Uh, no, rate and review. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, download from every possible platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, Phil, were you were you also getting into? Le- are you also like going into the manic mode right now? Bro, I don't know I where the I, fuck I am anymore. No, uh, that's that's how you know. Mm-hmm. I have a real exciting announcement for you guys, but I can't do it live, so I'll send this bitch. Okay. Uh, well, it seems yeah, we've arrived at our destination. It's now 